and make a film that is so, I mean, it's Canadian and it's a DNA. There's no, you can make that movie someplace else, uh, somewhere else. So to come here and be a part of that, and you know, to have it be received and before the hardware means something. Why we come back and make movie in Canada. At what point were you persuaded to be involved in the uh, fairly early. I mean, I think, I know that Mike McGowan had written the script and he had sent it to my manager, Mike Berkershaw, who knew it would be up my alley I mean, just because of the road trip aspect and the sort of uh, a life becoming on camera, which he knew was sort of <clears throat> story-wise things that I was something interested in, like anything that I want to write motorcycle about camera. <laughs> uh, and then we started talking I was actually on vacation with Diane, and we were talking, in fact, I was on my first vacation with Diane, now that I think about it, and I uh, read the script, and sort of the conversation progressed from there. Questions for Josh? Thank you. Uh, have you feel like it's going to be up for these chances? Come, have you seen this? Hmm. Did you get a perfect? Oh, you mean to get picked up? To be nominated. Well, I, all Canadian humility aside, I don't really see myself standing on that stage anytime too soon. But I do think there's a real possibility for John Noble, who plays my father, Walter, in the show, who is absolutely brilliant and truly deserves that recognition. So you start it. I'm going to start it. It's already picked up. Yeah. So definitely coming back. So we can blame it on this though, if you like. We can totally start that rumor. Sure. They were on the fence until the Genie Award, and then they picked it up. <laughs> Questions for Joshua? Oh, come on. I don't know how many more times we're going to get to do this. Ask me something. I'm giving you a ball. I got older. Uh, I, yeah, I, actually, that's <laughs> the bullshit answer. It's the true answer. I got older. I was 18 when we started that show, 24 when we came off of it, 28 when we shot this, did some good stuff in between, did some not very good stuff in between, but I think I just got older, you know, it, it takes time to live a life long enough to have something to say on camera. You know, the, the beauty of watching a young person perform, when you see some of these kids and there's a rawness to their ability to just put themselves on camera, and that has... I mean, it's shocking when you see somebody who just has no filter at all. But then as you get older, you start to learn the, the workman parts of it. And it takes a little bit of time and age. Of course. Well, yeah, they, I mean, yeah. It changes you as a man. When you change as a man, it changes as a man. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. You're supposed to emerge victorious in this category. All the forms have been very highly powered up. You're particularly seeing the kind of Yeah, the... Uh, well, I've, al I've also had the pleasure of uh, kicking Stephen McCaddy's ass on Fringe, and I gotta tell you, he's one tough son of a bitch. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was, I, I think, having not seen it because it was on TV, but I would guess if you saw my face when they said my name out loud, that would be the honest reaction. Yeah, I was very surprised. Uh, and very, very happy to be amongst those men. What are the major differences for you between acting and a regular TV series? <laughs> well, I say fringe is anything but regular. That's a great show. But what are the what are the differences as an actor? What's more challenging? What's more rewarding? Mm, they each have their own. I mean, the challenges of television, the, the rewards of television are also the challenges of television. The rewards are you get to, you get to tell, live with this character, hopefully over the course of years or many, many, many stories. And you live and grow, and it changes, and the show changes, and the character changes, and so you have a chance to sort of dip in with the same character, uh, potentially over the course. I mean, Dawson's ran for six years, so potentially over the course of a hundred stories or so. That also can be a huge grind because the TV hours are just crazy, and boring to hear actors complain about their work hours. But it is, you know, it's a grind, and you to try and maintain a level of quality that you would be proud of is tough sometimes. And then film on the opposite end, you know. TV, if you get something really wrong, you always have the next episode to sort of get it right. But in film, you're stuck there forever. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you satisfied with the audience that one week found, or would you like to see more people? Well, I, I would always like to see you know, 
my movies, well, particularly my movies, but everybody's movies find large audiences. But I think, you know, given what an uphill battle it is to try and get English language films out and in front of English speaking Canadians, not to mention French speaking Canadians, but let's just leave with English Canada for a second. I was actually really happy, pleasantly surprised with how, what the reception of the film was both in theaters and in the life that it seemed to have afterwards. Because maybe it's just that I've been home for the last year consistently, but uh, I've never had a film where more people sort of, you know, stop their day to come over and say, hey man, I saw your movie, I really enjoyed it. And I, I don't know, I feel like, I, I feel like it did touch people or it resonated. And there's, you know, there's something about Walk, being able to walk out of a Canadian film feeling good about your country, that's a good thing. Because we also don't pull punches in this country. We have a lot of really hard hitting films, but sometimes it's nice to go, yeah, I love it, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? What's next for you, Josh, and what might be next for you, having won the Uh, I don't know, this is usually the Disneyland part of the speech I'm going to use, right? Uh, no, I think what's next for me is a well-earned vacation. Just finished the second season of Fringe, and uh, I, I don't know. I'm I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm totally caught off guard by this. But uh, honestly, I'm going to take a little break for a while. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's, uh, I was. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I always felt that Michelle Williams was one of the most talented actors I've ever seen. She's also uh -huh. nominated in the Emmy for one of the in Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> I won. Ha ha. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That might not be the next phone call that I make. <laughs> but I appreciate the sentiment. Uh, Diane had a small part in Fringe the other night. Yeah. Uh, would you two like to work together on a film, maybe? Sure. Yeah, it was kind of stupid of me to invite her onto the show and then not be in the scene with her. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I'd love to work with Diane. I should be so lucky. Jocelyn Jackson, thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations.